Hello guys, this is a mini update to tell you how things worked out at the beginning of our organisation stuff. So this is a direct follow-on from what happened in session 86, okay? So while that was the aftermath, this is the aftermath aftermath. It's the after aftermath, okay? So uh, what happens next with the organisations bit, that is, and this is all we're here to cover... You know, the next official vidcast is coming. But just to cover this, we've got Tannadal's lot, and, you know, he's reforming the army now. And then we've got Karak uh, with, you know, his Red Hold consortium. Now, uh, to cover what has been going on and the state of affairs that they come into... They now have two factions, and, uh, you know, a faction each. So it's, you know, Tanadol versus Karak as leaders of, of factions, North versus South. And they've got their organisations, which could easily uh, be turned into um, troops for battles and things. So, it, I mean, it could and probably would come to that. Now, at this point... Tanadol's got the advantage. I mean, he's smaller as well. But his advantage is that Karak doesn't know that he's doing this. I mean, southern raiders do keep attacking here and there. But, you know, anything out of the ordinary, and it could come across as uh, quite a surprise. So, anyway, uh, you know, it would it would stand out as something different, and that might give the game away so that Karak knows, you know, maybe even who's attacking him. But on to actually what happened. So they each did an attempt at growth. That's how we kicked off the session. And that was for basically a state of affairs of how they have arrived and what they've come into. So Tanador, uh did not manage to do that. And um, if you actually fail the growth attempt, then you take stability damage. And if you succeed the growth attempt, then you just don't take damage. And if you actually like get stunts, if you roll doubles, then you can then use the stunt chart to grow in some way. And it's the same thing with plots. You know, an organization versus an organization, which has got its own stunt chart as well. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, we were running that, and, and it's a case of you know, trying to keep both sides feeling like there's a, uh, like it's fair sort of thing, and Karak's faction is stronger, it's got higher stats, that in, in, in every, in every way it's got higher stats, in all things, you know, higher stability and just all, <clears throat> all the rest of it, but, um, it's the amount of damage that can be done, as you'll see, needs to be justified in some way. And Craig was coming along and he pointed out, well, I, I wouldn't have actually built it this way. It doesn't basically match his vision for what he thinks Karak is doing. That said, Craig would <clears throat> have to argue that he isn't, Karak isn't the only one deciding here how the nature of um, the nature of things and uh, <clears throat> and also like the way that the others would lay it all out you know his sub commanders and and, and stuff so um, yeah I mean you can only ever try with 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 leadership but the way that it will the way that the people will um what they will grant you is a different thing sometimes to what you originally conceived <clears throat> and it's it's from here that they get to build the stats and build the focuses within those stats of the organization the way they want and i would tell both of them that that think maybe um you know, this is a bit too. This is this isn't necessarily how I'd have bought it. So to remember that they've got higher stats than 
uh, a normal starting organization uh, truly might have and it's one way that you can just build an org organization that way but you still should only normally give them two focuses and I've gone in and, and cherry picked more than that for them to what I think they would have at this point that they're not actually a new faction at all so they would have this this and these other things and stuff so they're more powerful than a starting faction would be anyway so is that to bear in mind but anyway uh, Redhold managed to grow and grow they did <clears throat> they, they got their magic up a bit and Tanadol went for his first plot against Redhold and so this was going to be like a a small raider's uh, attack on some trading caravans going going through up into the mountains between the between the the, uh, the tribes there the northern lot. So he hits this uh, important caravan, and uh, th they wipe it out. Now that's nice for for Tanadol's side, and obviously that you know they get to steal all the stuff. Um, but yeah, having done all of that, I then gave, uh, Craig the opportunity to, you know, reply in kind in some way. And so he wanted to, so he wanted to, he stated, well, look, I sent my spies basically along to look out for the caravans to attempt to, um, you know, do any of my scouts, do any of my scouts get back? And, you know, inform me, <clears throat> look, this has happened. Do any of them get away, effectively? So that's that's his counter-attack. And while it isn't necessarily the stat he'd have wanted, you've got to try and use the stat that is appropriate at that point. And so, yeah, you can't always play to your strengths, because your enemy isn't playing into your strengths at that moment in time. You know, that... They're very much the underdog and the unseen ones and, and this. So, yeah, he took massive stability damage from this, basically, attack on his wealth stat. And, yeah, while he came back and had a go, it um, wasn't a success. So uh, they killed all of the scouts as well. None of them got away to say exactly who had attacked. Or try, try to actually, you know, identify Tanadol. So, yeah, they all got away. And so, basically, Redhold took even more stability damage. So, the start of the war has been really great for Redhold. And there's been massive damage taken there by Redhold in its stability. Now, even though Redhold itself hasn't been hit, Craig was asking me, how, how does it work? How does it sort of justify that... Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, we we've already lost like half our stability. How's that kind of? How's that? You know, stability equals HP basically of organization. How how is that going to work? That we've lost all that much. You know, um, when we this is just like the beginning. That just doesn't sit right. I, and I, uh, the way I thought of it, well, seeing as it's on his wealth and it was the caravans, it's the other traders as well. The other. Tribes all like saying, oh gosh, we don't want to trade at the moment. We're actually reluctant to trade right now. And it's really, really harming them in that way. And then Tanadol's side managed to get a, a growth. And Redhold didn't get a, a doubles proc. So that's the situation. Carrot knows he's under attack. Um, and that somehow the southern lot have got organised. He doesn't know it's Tanadol organising it yet. But he's definitely got a focus now to start using his might and his magic against them, should he so wish to, to try and crush them down. That's the update between the two organisations battling it out. The War of the Axes is finished, maybe, but the war between the old friends has just begun.